Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at namespaces in C++. Namespaces are a way of um, avoiding conflicts between classes or even variables, uh, global variables that have the same name. And we'll take a look at how that works here. So I've got my Hello World project set up here. I'm going to right click it and go to new class. And uh, I won't put this in the namespace. Let's get rid of this. This is one I typed earlier. Let's create it without a namespace. And I'm going to create a class called cat. So, um, oh yeah, I should have typed up here actually first. Then it will fill in header and source for me. But anyway, let's create that class. And uh, I'll just give it one method just to kind of have it do something. So let's say void speak here. And of course, the implementation goes in the CPP file. So we can say void cat, cat, colon, colon, speak. And let's have just like a C out in there, meow, which is what cats uh, usually say. Although if you listen to my sister, they have entire conversations in English, but I, I disagree with her there. Let's include the... Um, Let's include the uh, header, include IO stream. And we've already seen uh, examples of using a namespace because after including IO stream, I think in most modern C++ uh, implementations, you now have to type using namespace standard. Namespaces were quite a late addition to C++, so it's possible you could have a compiler that doesn't require this, but um, in all the C++ compilers I've seen in the past few years, you now have to do this after including iostream. So that, that should work. And in our um, main function here, we can now include the cat header. Let's say include cat.h. And now we can say cat, cat, and cat.speak. So we've seen all this before. Let's just check that that is working because I like to make sure before I proceed any further um, because I make mistakes so easily. Um, I should have put double quotes here. On some compilers it won't make any difference. Uh, on some compilers um, angle brackets and double quotes are the same for your includes but on others like apparently this one the double quotes means a local include like this and the angle brackets, as we've seen before, means an include from a standard location. Let's try that again. Hopefully this will work. And I'll run it. There we go. So it says meow. Um, now, what if you want to have another class with the same name? That might occur, for example, because uh, let's say you might have your own implementation of string, which already exists in the standard libraries, or uh, you might um, you might want to implement something that already exists in include files that you've already got in your project. So whatever the reason, sometimes you get a clash between class names and namespaces will help you avoid that. So let's see how that works. I'm going to right click my project and let's create a new, let's create a new class and I'm going to call it cat again but I'm going to put it in a different file so that we don't, at least we don't have a clash with the file names in, because I'm putting all my um, files in one folder here, which you don't have to do, but I am doing. Let's call this animals.h and the source file cpp can be animals.cpp. But again, it's a class called cat. And I'm going to, it says class already exists, so it won't even let me define it. But we can get around that by using a namespace. Uh, your IDE will probably provide you with a way of doing this, but we're also going to look at typing out the namespace by hand. So the fact that I've already got a class called cat means I can't have another one. But what if I do want one? What if I just happen to include some stuff that has a cat class in it and I want another one? I want my own one. Let's tick namespace here and let's type in here. Well, we, we need to give our namespace a name and it can be whatever you want. Um, I'm going to just give it my initials here. So like, if you're just creating a load of classes for your own use, you're not going to distribute them, then uh, giving your namespace your own name or um, 
like uh, your initials or something makes perfect sense. If you're going to distribute your classes, you might want to give it some better namespace, like it could be the name of a company or it could be um, uh, something that describes what's in the namespace, like you could call it graphics or something like that. But the thing is, it mustn't have any spaces in it. And uh, I like to follow the convention that it's going to be lowercase and usually just one word. But if there's multiple words, I'll capitalize the first letter of each subsequent word like we do with variables. So let's put this in a namespace called JWP. Click finish there. And we can see what's actually happened is my new cat class here, it's got in the header file here, we've got namespace, the keyword, then a name that we gave to the namespace and curly brackets, which entirely enclosed the cat, um, the, <laughs> the cat entirely enclosed the class. And usually between curly brackets, you indent stuff that goes between them, but because then everything's going to be in a namespace and there's only going to be one namespace in a file usually, although you can have multiple. In this case, the auto format has not indented the stuff between these curly brackets and that's purely uh, just because otherwise everything in the file would be indented. If we look at the implementation, we've got the same thing here. So animals.cpp, again, namespace and the name and curly brackets which enclose everything in the file. We can put our other cat in a namespace as well. Uh, let's first, let's first go to this cat that I just defined. Give that a speak method as well. Let's say um, void speak again. And in animals.cpp, I'm going to say here void cat colon colon speak. Let's give this, let's make this do something different to the other speak in the other cat class. I'm just going to make it say like an aggressive cat noise and we also need to include up here somewhere we need to include via stream and we need using namespace standard which is an example of using a namespace which so far we've just been typing without going into what it actually is um, but we'll get on that in just a second so now we've got two cat objects if um, Let's, yeah, let's put this cat in a namespace. So in cat.h, I'm also going to put this in a namespace. So um, if we go back to our main project, I think this still compiles. Let's just run it, make sure. So this is still working. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to cat.h and around the class here, uh, not around these preprocessor directives, we want to leave those alone, but around the class and any other classes that are defined in this file. Usually you have one class in a header file and the implementation for one class in a CPP file, but you can define lots of classes in a header file. It's possible and you do see it. Um, so whatever you define in this header file, whatever you want to be in the namespace, you can surround with name space. Let's put it in a namespace called, I've got one called JWP. Let's call this, um, I don't know, let's call it cats. So just, just for a silly example here, and I'm going to close the namespace there and we'll have the names, the same namespace also needs to be around the implementation. So around the implementation here, not around the includes, again, this is a preprocessor directive. Uh, we've got two of them here and we, we don't want to put it around this using namespace standard, but around the implementation, I'm going to put um, this namespace declaration here. Let's save all that. Now if I try to compile the program, we're going to get um, an error. So if I do build, these little warning icons will turn into errors. And that's because to use this cat now, we have to say what namespace we want to use, um, what namespace we want to use, like what namespace do we get this cat from. Uh, so to do that, I've got two namespaces, remember now, namespace cats with a cat class in it and namespace JWP with another cat class in it. You can have whatever you want in a namespace, but I'm, I'm giving these classes the same names just, just to underline the fact that namespaces are designed to avoid conflicts between identically named classes. But that, doesn't, that of course, doesn't mean that you've got to have identically named classes in different namespaces. That would be crazy. It's just that it can happen and namespaces help sort that out. So let's say, um, let's say we're going to use the cat's namespace here. 
then we can say using at the top of the program using namespace cats semicolon and now let's try to build this project hopefully it will work so the error goes away and if we run this it says meow our other namespace is called jwp my initials so let's change this to using space j namespace jwp and let's run this and now whoops got some sort of error there let's not run it um, let's see what the problem is here so it says um, error expected namespace name oh yeah um, well I haven't included the header file so uh, without the header file it doesn't know the namespace exists so let's also include here let's include the header file in which we define that namespace which is animals.h so let's put that in animals.h now we should be good to go let's run it and it says because this time it's getting the cat class from the JWP namespace instead of the cat's namespace. So it's two identically named classes in different namespaces and we can select which one we want by saying which namespace we want up here. What would we do if, um, if we want to use both classes, which again could occur because let's say you have your own implementation of string but you also use the string from the standard namespace in your program. So you want to differentiate between the two. Instead of, or, or also in addition to, if you prefer these using namespace statements, you can, say, you can do stuff like this. We can say um, JWP cat cat2 and let's say cat.speak. Or if we want the cat from the other namespace, sorry, we've got to have a double colon there actually the namespace name followed by a double colon and then the class or we could say um, cats colon colon cat cat3 let's say and cat3.speak also I meant to make this cat2.speak okay so um, besides importing all the classes in a namespace using uh, using a using statement you can also explicitly pick out classes from particular namespaces using this kind of syntax, the namespace name, followed by a double colon. Let's run this, check that it works. So we've got, that's coming from this cat, and then the JWP namespace cat also says, so that's this one, because we say using namespace JWP up here. And meow is, is coming from this, because that's the cat from the cat's namespace, it's a different object. So if we've got a using statement in here and you use your class without any qualification, it's going to pick up the class from uh, whatever you specified in your using namespace. But if you don't have that, um, then you need to pick out your classes using this syntax here. So like if, if I didn't have this in here now, only our first cat is going to give us an error because here we haven't specified a namespace and uh, C++ doesn't know what default to use because we haven't said using namespace such and such here. Let's put that back in. Uh, you can define variables in your namespace if you want. We haven't really looked at global variables actually, but um, in fact, I'm not sure that this is really a good place to look at it here. Let's take a look at a constant because that's a bit simpler. So in cat.h, we could have a global constant like const, um, let's say cat, I don't know, cat name equals uh, Freddy. This is a ridiculous example. Let's say const string cat name equals Freddy. This is a, rig a ridiculous example of a <laughs> constant, but just to illustrate the point. And we, we're also going to need this. We're also going to need to use um, iostream in here. But actually, what we could do is go to cat.cpp, and if we cut this out here and put it in cat.h below the defines here, then that's good for for the string in here, and it's also good for see out in here because remember when a program is compiled cat.h is going to be literally included in this file in a copy of it before it's compiled 
So it doesn't matter whether we put um, include IS stream up here in the CPP or in the corresponding .edit file which the CPP includes. Let's try that. And um, I need the semicolon there. Whoops. I'm also going to declare another constant. Um, let's give it the same name um, just because we can. In animals.h, let's put a constant in here as well. And let's call this tiddles. And again, um, I'll take the IR stream from animals.cpp, put it in animals.h. And we need the using namespace standard as well. So I think, that, I think that all looks good. Let's save everything and try to run it. So it builds, we're fine. Now in our, our main file here, we could refer to, the, to these constants via their namespaces. So we could say, um, what do I call it, cat name. We could say uh, jwp colon colon cat name endler. And we can also say, of course, if we want, um, animals.catName, that's our other namespace, I think. We've got J no, we've got JWP and cats, getting confused myself. Those are our two namespaces. Yeah. Okay, and if we refer to cat name without any namespace in here, well, because we've got a using namespace JWP, if we don't specify the namespace, it's going to default to this. Let's run this. And we can see that we've got Tiddles, Freddy, and the default is Tiddles because of this. OK, that's, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, so to practice this, um, I would recommend, I've got, I've got errors down here, which is a bit annoying, but I don't think they're real because it actually builds without errors. Yeah, it's just Eclipse being weird. OK, so um, to practice this, um, I'd recommend just doing what I've done there. Uh, you don't have to define classes of the same name because um, I just did that to demonstrate that namespaces avoid collisions. But create, a two, let's say, two classes, put one in one namespace and the other in an, and another namespace, and then try to do two different ways of referring to the namespace in your main function. Try using and try try this kind of syntax as well with a double colon. And remember, the, to define a namespace, it is really simple. You just need namespace such and such and curly brackets surrounding your class definition and also your class implementation. So I hope you'll have a go at that. We're almost at the point now where we can start putting together like an example complete program. Uh, the program that I have in mind is not going to use everything that we've seen, but it's going to use uh, a first selection of everything. But we've still got some more stuff to cover before we get to that point. Um, so we'll carry on for a few more videos before we get into trying to create an actual program. But we will get onto that, you know, an actual program that does something. We will get onto that in time. So until next time, happy coding.